Hello everyone, thanks for tuning to today's fur uh, video. We're going to have a look at the weather the next 10 to 14 days for today's uh, fur video. So day 10 takes us to around the 20th of March. We'll, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with, with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. So we're going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which will take us into early April. Uh, of course... So two videos released so far today. Uh, we uh, started off with a quick look at the Cheltenham Festival. So the first sort of events forecast uh, for this season are underway. How many events forecasts we'll be able to do this season remains to be seen. Um, but we've got one for Cheltenham Festival in uh, anyway. And uh, also uh, USA forecast, of course, as always on a Wednesday. If you enjoy the videos, please smash your like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, click the bell. You'll be uh, notified by YouTube when we release our videos. And drop a comment. Let us know what you think about all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Uh, right, so we're going to start off with the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast. First of all, so the black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red lines are the M where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. If it's just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state, it doesn't drive anything in its own terms, it just tells us what the atmosphere is doing. When the AO is in its negative phase, it's got high pressure blocking over the pole. Uh, and the blocking, of course, is a route forcing cold air out of the pole and down into the mid latitudes. Uh, by the same token, though, when the AO is positive, then you have low pressure up over the pole. And low pressure over the pole tends to get cold air bottled in over, over the North Pole. So for most of the winter, the Arctic Oscillation uh, was negative. We had a lot of blocking through the winter. Uh, but into the half of February, the AO suddenly went positive. And uh, we've been in a positive phase of the AO since around the middle of February, uh, really. Where we are right now is strongly positive with the Arctic Oscillation. It's going to go virtually off the scale positive in the next few days. So, so really uh, dramatic uh, contrast to what we have through most of the winter off the scale positive with the AO and then because can't maintain that sort of positivity all that long so then we do drop down but probably remaining on the positive side uh, you know out out to the second half of uh, of March so so yeah you know this is a very significant change that we uh, underwent or it was a very significant change that we underwent in the second half of February and we're still in that much more uh, sort of uh, westerly type uh, setup now any observed the forecast also uh, looks like this, nowhere near as dramatic, but uh, again, this measures air pressures between Iceland and the Azores. When the, uh, when the NAO is negative, they've got weaker pressure or higher pressure around Iceland and lower pressure through the Azores, but it's the reverse when the NAO is uh, positive. Where we are right now with the NAO, so for most of winter, the NAO was like uh, weekly negative. Where we are right now with the NAO is weekly positive. And again, we see a GFS ensemble over the next couple of weeks forecasting the NEO to stay uh, in positive or weekly positive territory. So this is a signal, ongoing signal uh, for, for westerlies. That does not necessarily mean it's going to be very unsettled though. We might find ourselves under an area of high pressure for example. In fact that looks increasingly likely through the course of next week. And it doesn't necessarily guarantee it's going to be overly mild especially so as you go further on into the spring and into the summer. Well, we've got a real strong uh, westerly blast at the moment, and winds are going to be reaching severe gale force like this from Weather Outlook, based on uh, the latest uh, GFS run. So, so it's a windy day out there already, but winds are really going to power up uh, later this afternoon and into this evening. Gusts of wind running up the Irish Sea uh, up to around 50, 60 miles an hour this afternoon, and they get even stronger into the evening, where we may well have uh, like 60, 70 mile an hour gusts around these northern and western coasts coast of uh, northwest England and Wales and down southwestern England as well. Some parts of the Republic of Ireland, but some of Ireland will be seeing uh, gusts going up to 70 or 80 miles per hour uh, tonight. And then those very strong winds transferring into the Irish Sea uh, as we go up to midnight. Uh, we've got like 70 mile an hour plus gusts of wind then beginning to move towards the west coast of uh, Wales. And so, you know, overnight we could well see gusts like 70 80 miles an hour around northern, western facing coast of Wales in particular, possibly affecting some parts of northwest England, maybe southwest England as well. Further inland, not as strong as that, but even so, gusts up to 50, 60 mile, miles an hour running through like inland parts of Wales and Midlands 
over towards East Anglia, Eastern England. Very significant blow uh, that we've got here overnight. So you, you, if you cross England away, you really are going to hear the wind uh, blowing away uh, tonight. Will, the strikes of winds will clear off into the North Sea uh, quite quickly. So by 6 to 9 a.m., uh, the winds are falling lighter here. Still, still strong. I mean, we're still talking about 30, 40 mile an hour uh, gusts at 9 a.m. But the worst of winds do transfer over into uh, the North Sea and move out of the way uh, by breakfast time. But these winds could be, uh, you know, damaging and they could cause disruption. So if you're off out and about tonight or early tomorrow morning, then uh, do take care. GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. The next couple of weeks looking like this. The red line is 30 year upper air temperature average for rugby. Looking at rugby today. Starting off mild of an average today. It is quite mild out there, despite the fact we're under low pressure, so there's wind and rain around. But once this low pressure and its very strong winds clears through, temperatures are going to uh, drop. It's actually going to become uh, quite cold as we go through the second half week and into weekend. Only next week, the upper air temperatures will lift up, but it'll be associated with an area of high pressure. And as we run out into like the final week of March, we have got a little bit of a cooling train uh, appearing here. Some really quite cold GFS ensemble members, actually. Some of these are going down to or in below minus 10 at 850 HA. They're outliers, but there is clearly after like a warming trend over the weekend into next week, a cooling trend as we move into the final week of March. Uh, precipitation wise it looked like this so quite a, bit of, uh, quite a bit of precipitation to come over the next uh, two, three, four days. Going to be plenty of showers. A drying trend over the weekend into uh, next week. Then maybe a little bit more unsettled through the early part of uh, March. You'll have to see about that. It's very extended range. Temperature knowledge on the 10th to the 18th of March is going to be around or slightly below average, particularly so for England and Wales. Generally quite a chilly scene coming up across most parts of the Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of March average to slightly above average, especially for more northern and western areas. Here's today's latest wind flow map from EarthNotSchool.net showing that we have got a very significant area of low pressure storm. Don't think it's been named, but we have got what I would classify as a storm anyway, giving 70 or 80 mile an hour gusts. I don't know why it's not been named by the UK Met or Met Air, but in my opinion it should be. I have absolutely no idea what the criteria is for naming storms. It seems so random to me and, and I continue to be, uh, you know, I don't agree. <laughs> I'm sure it's no surprise anyway, I don't agree with naming storms. I never really have done because it seems absolutely random which ones get named and which don't. Uh, but anyway, I'm on my soapbox, don't mind about that. Uh, we've got these very uh, intense colours here in the Atlantic showing that we have got got significant winds uh, west of Ireland and they're going to be heading our way as we've already established with that area of low pressure uh, you know through tonight so it is going to be very very windy tonight Right, so here we go then with UK Met for Saturday. Low pressure will be dinging in from off the Atlantic, bringing showers along as well as rain. Quite tightly packed ice bars as well, so still quite windy into Saturday. And as this low pressure digs south, there will be some quite cold air on its northern edge, so some of, some of the precipitation might turn to uh, snow, especially over high ground. In the north, into Sunday, we're going to a strong and cold, showery northwesterly wind. And then early next week, high pressure will begin to move in from uh, the south West gradually turning things drier uh, as we get through into the early part of next week. But with winds, with winds remaining from like a west northwesterly direction, it will be uh, quite chilly. Right, so this is how the uh, GFS 6Z is looking. Again, another deep area of low pressure coming through on Saturday, bringing another bout of strong winds, maybe up to gale force for some of the western parts of the country, and bouts of heavy rain coming in with that area of low pressure as well. That low pressure gets out of the way into the north sea, and we're left with like a strong, cold, showery northwest wind for Sunday. Early next week, high pressure begins to build in from off the Atlantic. That settles us down, turns us drier, but with high pressure to our west, we'll keep wind in from the north, and so it will remain quite chilly for the early part of next week. Into the middle of next week, high pressure will continue to dominate the weather and uh, probably bring night frost, but by day, if there's sunshine, it should feel 
pleasantly mild in that sum, I would have thought. Heading up towards day 10, the high pressure has a go at bridging to Scandinavia and pulling in an east wind, but doesn't actually pull it off on this Jeff S run, so we just stick under high pressure, bringing dry, and maybe by this point, 20th March, some milder air in from off the Atlantic, especially so for northern areas. In the more extended range, again, the high pressure carries on uh, really right way up to the very end of the Jeff S run, which uh, gets to 26th of March. We're still under high pressure. Winds are going into the east. They're not particularly cold east, Liz. But the main the main emphasis with GFS is, is for a lot of high pressure and dry weather in uh, in the next couple of weeks once we get this unsettled weather out of the way uh, for the rest of this week. GM looks like that again, uh, rather unsettled or very unsettled on Saturday with another bout of rain leading to showers as we go through into Sunday. Uh, then on into next week, same idea. We begin to build this ridge in from the south and from the west. But winds remain from a northerly direction, probably bring further wintry showers uh, or certainly showers anyway, down the east coast. Moving up towards day 10, uh, the GM has high pressure taking over as well, so the trend next week is increasingly high and dry. Uh, that's how long as we get to day 10 again under that area of high pressure, which may by this point just be starting to weaken a bit and allow some lower pressure into the northwest. But the emphasis is definitely shifting towards higher pressure across all model output for next week. ECM, again, uh, looks windy and showery uh, over the weekend, but as we get through into next Next week takes a little bit long to do it, but eventually high pressure builds in from off the Atlantic. Again, we are on the cold side of that ridge, still bring, bringing in the air from like a northwesterly to northerly direction. So it will be chilly on, on the side of this ridge, um, but a lot of dry weather. The ECM does also pull in, a, pull in a bit of an easterly later next week. So the ECM is still getting that idea of like an easterly coming in later next week with maybe some wintry showers into the southeast. But most of the other model output today just has this high pressure, more or less century located over the country, bringing a lot of dry, if quite chilly weather with frost by night, but hopefully if there's sunshine anyway, relatively pleasant days. Uh, this would be precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run, so very wet and windy at the moment, leading to showers and then maybe more longer spells of rain as we go through into uh, Saturday. Winter showers again packing into the north and to the west. Sunday should go drier and into the open of next week. Some show rain through the early part of the week before the trend is towards higher pressure and drier conditions, although as the wind goes into the east here, around the 18th of March, you are bringing in some precipitation from the east. Now, the ECM has that primarily as rain, but of course, it's probably quite close from the thing, whether that would be rain or snow uh, coming in from the east. Um, but anyway, we finish up with high pressure back in over the country, and we're mainly uh, dry at day 10. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 20th of uh, March. So 17 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure to our north and northwest. So we're bringing in an easy wind, especially so for more southern areas. 12 have high pressure centred over top of the country. That's going to be mostly dry. 10 have the high pressure just to our west and around the ridge. We're bringing probably quite a chilly northwesterly wind, but again, should be mostly dry. 7 have the high pressure further away from us to our north and west with lower pressure to our east and south and winds are much more in from an east or north east direction with that so that's the most unsettled and coldest option and then five have low pressure just to our west with high pressure just to our east we'll be bringing up like a southwesterly wind low pressure pushing it off the atlantic bringing spells of wind and rain um but that's probably quite a mild option that's probably the mildest option actually uh with winds up from a southwesterly to probably a southerly direction in two weeks time uh these are the options that we've got this is going to get us to the 25th of march 14 members of the ECM ensembles will have low pressure over and to the northwest of the bring in like a flat west or northwesterly wind. 13 uh, will have high pressure, uh, more or less sent over the country, so completely the opposite. That's going to be mostly dry if that comes off. Uh, number 13 just here have a high pressure over the country as well. 
it's going to be mainly dry. And then 11 have high pressure blocking to the north, low pressure to the south, and winds in from the east. That's probably the coldest and wettest option. So uh, it's almost like a even split, isn't it? We've got the 14 just there and the 10 and the 11 just here. These two options that uh, that are the most that are unsettled. And then we've got 13 and 13, uh, but but uh, but are much more anticyclonic. So so you know it's it's very very uh, much a split, almost 50 50, not quite, but almost. 50-50 uh, where things are going to go as we get to the final week of March. Will it be high pressure or will it be low pressure? Finally, the CFS V2, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into wheat pairs. The first wheat pair takes us from the 10th to the 16th of March. The coming week, we'll have low pressure to our north and west, and winds will be coming in from a west or probably quite chilly northwesterly direction. Uh, all change to week two. Uh, this is going to be the 17th to 23rd of March. High pressure is in Odobi country then. Should be mostly dry, and um, and yeah, you know, but very dry. Uh, with that, though, not really much more to say. Uh, week three is going to take us from the 24th of March to the 30th, the high pressure and pulls out to our west, low pressure back into our north, winds are in from the west to probably rather northwesterly direction, that's going to be turning more unsettled, probably quite chilly, and then week four, this looks like spring, it's the 31st of March, 6th of April, high pressure from Spain going all the way up to Scandinavia, uh, low pressure out towards Green Iceland, jet streams going like that, so we should be setting things down and turning things much milder as well as we draw up the air from southerly and southwesterly direction. If you enjoyed the video, please can you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're on Grind to 10k subscribers. And uh, if you do, no, we're not. We're on with Grind to 11k subscribers. And if you do subscribe, you'll see future weather content. Don't forget to tell your friends, family, everybody else who subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Uh, particularly subscribe if you watch the videos at gabsweatherviz.com because the website will be going inactive in a couple of months' time. Uh, from the 1st of May, we will not be embedding the videos to the website from the 1st of May, so uh, you'll need to watch on the YouTube channel, so please subscribe if you uh, if you, uh, if you you do that, and uh, and uh, don't get to tell your friends about Gals over his family members as well, and drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, thank you so much everybody for doing that. Right, that's it for today's video today, tomorrow we're going to be back with 10 to 14 day, uh, and uh, we'll start off though with the European Outlook, so uh, more videos tomorrow for this one, however, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.